Armando Hasurungan, Biology and Medicine videos. Please make sure to subscribe, join the forming group for the latest videos. Please visit Facebook Armando Hasurungan and here you can like. Please ask questions, answer some questions and post some interesting things such as artworks. It'd be greatly appreciated. And you can also change the quality settings to the highest one for better graphics. And in this video, we're going to talk about nephrology, about the kidneys, the nephrons, etc. And so we have this person with an open abdominal cavity, and this is where the kidneys are situated, as well as other functional organs. Now, if we zoom into the abdominal here, the open abdominal, we can see two kidneys. We have each two kidneys, the left one being sl slightly higher than the right. And above the kidneys, we have adrenal glands, and these adrenal glands secrete hormones. Now, the, kid the kidneys' normal function is to produce urine, which then travels through, th through the ureter, into the urethra, where it can then be expelled by our body, either through the penis or the vagina. Now also we have the arteries, the big aorta, which supplies our kidneys and other organs around it. And then we have the inferior vena cava, which brings the, brings the blood back to the heart. Now let's zoom into one of these kidneys and look at its anatomy briefly. So we're looking at the left kidney here with a cross-sectional view. So we know that the kidney produces urine, but why does it produce urine? Well, the, it does this because the kidneys regulate the pH, the volume, and composition of the blood. And so it also eliminates nitrogenous waste via urine. And it also has another function in that it secretes a particular hormone, erythropoietin, which I will not discuss in this video. Now, the main structures of the kidneys, we have the renal cortex, the outer part section of the kidney, and then we have the renal medulla, the inner part of the kidney. And then we have the renal pyramids of, this, this, of the medulla. And pyramids are only situated in the medulla, usually. And then we have the renal pelvis, which uh, connects to the ureter. So again, the kidneys has a superficial cortex and a deeper medulla, consisting mainly of uh, medulla pyramids. And now... The kidneys have a very rich blood supply because this is how the kidneys regulate the blood pH, volume, and composition. Now, the, the artery which brings blood into the kidneys is called the renal artery. The most important thing about the kidney is that they contain what's called nephrons, which are situated in the renal cortex and in the renal medulla. And these nephrons are the functional unit of kidneys, and we have many, many, many nephrons, about one and a, one and a half million per kidney. And the, and the nephrons are the ones that actually filtrate, reabsorb, and secrete substances to, to make urine um, to be expelled by the body. And so they are the ones that help regulate blood pH, composition, and volume. So nephrons are the big deal. Now here you can see this is the head of the nephron, and it continues down to form a loop and it forms a loop within the medulla the renal medulla and as you can see uh, here's a renal cortex and we have blood supply coming into the head of the nephron because blood begins getting filtered in the head of the nephron where, uh, which then all the substances uh, which have been filtered then travels through the nephron through here following this route and then out through this long vertical tube known as a collecting duct. Now, let's just concentrate on the blood supply again to the kidneys. Remember that the aorta is the big artery, which then will form the renal artery, which supplies the kidneys. The blood will then travel to uh, essentially the afferent arterioles at the very end. And the afferent arterioles is what goes into this head of the nephron, known as the renal corpuscle, which consists of the glomerular capsule, the outer part of the head, and most importantly, the glomerulus. That is a really difficult word to say. And the glomerulus is formed from the afferent arterioles, and this is where filtration occurs. And then after this, the glomerulus will form the efferent arterioles, which leaves the nephron, essentially this blue thing. Now the function of the nephron, as I mentioned, is for filtration, tubu tubular reabsorption, and tubular secretion, which occurs all along the nephron. 
except filtration, which occurs at the glomerulus. So let's just say when the afferent arterioles brings blood to the renal corpuscle, the, glomerular, the glomerulus will then do filtration, and then all the substances and water will then travel down through the nephron. The first part it travels down through is called the proximal convoluted tubule, which then travels to the loop of Henle, this big loop. And the loop of Henle consists of two parts, the descending loop and the ascending loop of Henle. The ascending loop of Henle will then form the distal convoluted tubules, where the blood will still be traveling. The distal convoluted tubule actually has to loop back to where the glomerulus was, the renal corpuscle, and we'll see the reason for this later on. And essentially then, the distal convoluted tubule will then connect to this vertical long tube known as a collecting duct, which will then essentially connect to the ureter, which will then expel the urine out of the, out of the kidneys, out of the body. Now, back to this diagram, where the efferent arterioles brings blood back out of the, the head of the nephron, it then can form the vasorecta, or it can form the renal uh, vein, essentially, and then will form the inferior vena cava. Now, this vasorecta only occurs, only is present in certain types of nephrons. And we'll get back to this soon. But another important thing to remember is that each part of the nephron contains different types of cells. And so, let's just draw another diagram of these nephrons. Now, here I will draw two types of nephrons, because there are two main types of nephrons. One which, ha which consists of the vasorecta, the vein, the special vein. Now, this long-looking nephron, which dips down into the medulla, is known as the juxta medullary nephron. And it has a long loop of Henle, and it consists and it contains the vasorecta vessels, which I mentioned previously. And this other one, the short-looking one, which just dips to the medulla, but is more prominent in the cortex, is known as a cortical nephron. And it has a short loop of Henle, and doesn't go deep into the medulla. Remember, the blood travels towards the renal corpuscle, which will then, um, where it will then get filtrated in the glomerulus, and all these substances and water will then travel through the nephron, and be and reabsorption and secretion will occur, which will then form urine, and this urine will then travel down through the to the collecting duct into the ureter, which will then be expelled by the body. Okay, now. I mentioned this earlier, but kidneys have very rich blood supply, and this is important in order to regulate the blood composition, pH, volume, and to eliminate waste, as well as for reabsorption and secretion all along the nephron. And so basically, the kidneys has a rich blood supply, and this is because once the efferent arterial leaves the uh, renal corpuscle, from the glomerulus, it will then begin wrapping around and basically traveling all through the nephron, all along the nephron. And this is in order to enable the nephron to perform reabsorption and secretion all along the nephron. And once the, the nephron has been reabsorbing and secreting all its substances into this capillary, the capillary will then form the vein, which will then form this bigger vein, and essentially will form the renal vein, and then we'll yeah, continue on. Now, the juxtamedullary nephron is different to the cortical nephron in that it has a vasorecta. And the vasorecta is also the, the capillary-like capillary structure, which is formed after the efferent arterioles, after the efferent arterial leaves the renal corpuscle. And what's important about vasorecta is that it's sort of like a straight uh, vessel. And this enables uh, some serious secretion and reabsorption of water down this uh, big loop of Henle. And so, actually, the vasorecta and juxta medullary nephron are important in establishing the medullary osmotic gradient. And so, helps in um, essentially in water balance and to either make the urine concentrated or not as concentrated, you can say.
Finally, we can look at the different types of cells all along the nephron. Let's begin with the collecting duct here. And they consist of two types of cells mainly, the cuboidal cells, the principal cells, and the intercalating cells. And then let's look at the loop of Henle. The loop of Henle has these thin segmented cells, which are which, which sort of epithelial-like cells, so it's very good for uh, reabsorption and secretion. And then let's go to the distal convoluted tubules, which consists of just your regular cuboidal cells, and this can also perform reabsorption and secretion. And then we have the proximal convoluted tubule cells, which are also cubo cuboidal cells. But what's unique about them is that they have microvilli on the surface, and microvilli are uh, like finger-like projections which help in reabsorption, and that's what they're important for. And then we have the renal corpuscle, which can, consists of the two main um, things, the glomerular capsule and the glomerulus itself. Now, the glomerular capsule contains uh, epithelial-like cells, very thin prior parietal cells, and the glomerulus contains these special cells known as podocytes, and they are attached onto basically the basement membrane of the glomerulus. Okay, now let's zoom into the renal corpuscle here to put some of these cells into context, the podocytes, the parietal cells, for example. So here we have the blood vessel coming into the renal corpuscle. The afferent, um, the afferent arterioles brings in blood and other substances into, uh, to form the glomerulus. And then surrounding it, we have the glomerular capsule made up of parietal cells here. And then these substances uh, in the glomerulus will then get help get filtered by these special cells called podocytes, which are on the basement membranes. And this area here is known as a renal corpuscle where all this occurs. And then the glomerulus and the renal corpuscle will then uh, filtrate all these substances and bring it towards the proximal convoluted tubules, which are made up, up, up of these cuboidal-like cells with microvilli on the top. And once filtration has occurred within the glomerulus and this sort of capsule-like uh, structure, the Bowman's capsule, but we'll talk about that later on, uh, the glomerulus will then form the efferent arterioles, which will then bring blood out. And so the, gl the glomerulus or which forms a Bowman's capsule, which I'll talk about in the next video, is for filtration. In the next video, we're going to talk about the physiology of the nephrons and all other interesting stuff that occurs there. Hope you enjoyed it. Please like, comment, and please provide feedback if possible. Thank you very much.